Does this come back to you? 2x minus 5, that's two parentheses. Minus 5. Can you tell me what goes inside that parentheses? Well, that's exactly what we had in that parentheses. Now, what happens? Do you see any simplification you can do? Twos are gone. You get x plus 5 minus 5. Twos are gone. What happens to the fives? What do you get? So, are these things in fact inverses? Yeah. If you had gotten anything else besides x, would they have been inverses? No. no. That's it. It's undoing what you plugged in. This said you started with, by plugging in x, went through both functions, and gave you out x. That means the inverse actually undid the function. Now, let's see if this works in reverse. I'll bet you a billion dollars it does. <laughs> Need a new car, game. don't you? Yeah. <laughs> f inverse of f of x. That's the same thing as this. F inverse of f of x. We leave our f inverse, and in the parentheses, we put our f. What's our f of x again? So we're going to put our 2x minus 5 inside of our, our parentheses. What now? Plug it into the f inverse. Okay, so we look at f inverse. What's f inverse say? x plus 5 divided by 2. x plus 5. So x plus 5 over x plus 5. Are, are you still OK on this stuff? I need to know how many people feel all right with, with what we're doing here. If you're not, if you're like, uh, oh, not so. This is our inverses, right? This was our 12.1. You had to be OK at, at the 12.1 to be able to do this. So we look back at our inverses. We say x plus 5 over 2. X, that's parentheses plus 5 over 2. Can you see that this is actually the f inverse? That really is parentheses plus 5 over 2. What goes inside this parentheses is exactly what I had inside this parentheses. So that's 2x minus 5 over 2. What happens here? The 5s cancel each other out, and the 2s also. 5s are gone. 5s are gone. We're going to get 2x over 2. Of course, if we have 2x over 2, how much is that going to give us? X. Did you come up with the same thing both ways? Yep. This is the only time in the history of mathematics where you will compose two functions two different ways and will give you the same answer. The only time that happens is if they're inverses. That's, that's it. And that will be x. It will come up with x. Would you originally have to feel okay with the, with the idea here? So on our, on our day today, on our section, you should know how to do a few things. Firstly, you should know how to find an inverse. If I just give you this, you should be able to find on your own that thing. Nod your head you can do that. Yes, no? Also, you should know that graphically, all that's happening when I'm flipping my x's and my y's, when I find my inverse, is taking this function and reflecting it across a diagonal line that's y equals x. That's the second thing. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Third and final thing, you should be able to check whether two things are functions, or I'm sorry, whether those two functions are actually inverses by composing them, by taking one of them and putting them inside the other. Now, do you have to show me both? No, I really don't care. Just pick one of them and compose it. Compose your f inverse inside your f of x. If it comes out to x, it's an inverse. If it doesn't come out to x, it's not an inverse. So if you're, if you're a little sloppy on this work, go back and look at your at finding those compositions from the last section. That's going to help you out, because that's all we're doing. We're just composing those things. That's why we went quickly through that. We've already, already done that. Can you please show me by a show of hands how many people would feel pretty good about what we talked about so far? OK, good. Now, there are some specific functions we are going to talk about. The first one that we're going to cover 